Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Alms Podcast. This is, I believe, episode 13, if I'm not mistaken. Could be 12, could be 14. <laughs> I didn't. I forgot to check out the list here. <clears throat> How's everybody doing this morning? Hopefully, well. <laughs> Anyways, this morning's verse is in Corinthians 10.23, and it is Paul talking to the Corinthian audience. And it's under the New International Version. It's the believer's freedom. Says, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. Now, this particular verse itself has also been used in the context of, well, even though everything is permissible, not everything is beneficial. And there is some sort of good news to that, right? The sense that God is not trying to restrict you from the best life that you can have. (laughs) Everything is technically up for grabs. But just because everything is up for grabs doesn't mean it's beneficial, right? And with that being said, we carry into this idea that many churches have preached this as a sort of doctrine. Um and you try to figure out the balance between the doctrine and the practical application. So if you've heard this before, and you're trying to understand this, you might say, um, I, I'm not sure where this is coming from, right? Um's podcast, um's, <laughs> um's all around. Um, cheers. <laughs> so let's try to break this down. Uh, a little bit of the Corinthian culture background, right? The Corinthians um, were let's just say, uh, worshiping a goddess of love, uh, Aphrodite. And the main belief was that sex is okay, sex with anyone was okay. So the whole culture regarding sex was kind of like our sex craze culture today, but with no limits, no, no, no parameters, right? Nobody was like, it was like Tinder was like eating Cheerios in the morning, (laughs) right? So it was just like a everyday thing and paul's simply basically preaching or teaching um that you know to be god's holy people there we've got to change this up and the only reason why i think that becomes very apparent is because um you know god cares for his people and he doesn't want them to be in this sort of slave mindset towards pleasure itself he doesn't want people to just their focus to just be on pleasure because pleasure can bring a lot of pain, right? Um, if abused. So with that being said, there's good news here, right? Um, what I see is first and foremost that um, there's an opportunity here, right? And a great one. You know, uh, the reason I say this is because, you know, this really shows that God through Paul is trying to get to us in our communities, letting us know, look, I know that the culture is very sexually, you know, um, I, I guess you say active, right? And it's very pervasive. So all I'm saying is that just because it is, doesn't mean that that is beneficial to you. Plain and simple, practical application, right? Um, back then you have to understand also that their culture was, you know, not, all the Greeks, right? But there were a large sum who were uneducated. And with uneducation, you do have this sort of dominant slave mentality towards the pleasure. You don't know any better. You don't know what's on the other side. Uh, You don't know that God is leading his holy people uh, with purpose and can give you purpose. So um, all I know is that it was pretty bad because to Corinthize a woman, quote unquote, or to Corinthize anybody was to sleep with them, to sleep with a prostitute, um, to just, you know, have a lot of debauchery, right, going on. And plain and simple, uh, that was the Corinthian culture. So Paul's addressing the Corinthian culture. So how do we, I mean, it seems like it's right up our alley. When we understand that, we understand now, okay, this is not so dissimilar to our culture. You know, we might have been, you know, worshiping goddesses of love, but, you know, you never know who is worshiping the goddess of love technically still, because to worship pleasure, to have pleasure over God, you could be worshiping the goddess of love just in that very metaphorical way. So it's very interesting. 
Well, our culture is the swipe right culture, right? As you guys are probably familiar, you know, all these dating apps, swipe right. Uh, if it's Tinder, swipe right. And uh, just a little background on my experience with this is that it never leads to anything good. You usually have this intention that's wrong when it comes to going on Tinder for just the, the intention of wanting to sleep with somebody um, or the intention of just wanting to hook up with somebody. And I really feel as though it's important to talk about how valuable you are as a person and also your vessel, i.e. your body is, um, in the relationship that you have with God, right? Because um, God wants to use you and, and do everything he can with you to use you as a holy, righteous you know, instrument on planet Earth. And that means great things, everybody. That means maybe becoming a, a well-renowned author. It means maybe utilizing your spiritual gifts in many different areas. It means maybe having a very fulfilled life within the Christian community. But he can't do that if you constantly are drawn towards pleasure. He can't do that if you constantly are sinning. You, he can't do that if you are fragmenting that image of yourself because you don't realize how highly um, God thinks of you in this way and how much he says to elevate your bodies and to consider how much, you know, just, you can think of it as a human being, right? Think about how much experience and richness you've been through as a human being. Do you really just want to offer yourself up just because the sort of dominant part of your brain that is the that's looking for that pleasure in that moment, right, is trying to get that pleasure in that moment and then it's gone. Right? It's a fleeting pleasure and it never lasts and you're always coming back for more. Right? This is sort of the idea along the lines where Christ is saying that I'm, you know, the the fountain of life, you know. When you drink from me, you won't thirst again because when we do drink from Christ, we don't have that sense of oh, I I need more. We can continue to just pull into that fulfillment in that way spiritually with Jesus. Um, and that's just not something we could do a lot of times because, um, you know, we face prime, you know, sort of these primate urges, so to speak, right? Primitive urges. And um, when they kick it in the body, nobody's blaming you for what you're dealing with. But at the same time, there are capabilities of teaching yourself this is not worth it in this moment. So I can look towards words you know from paul i can look towards corinthians i can understand that i'm not alone in this this has been around for centuries uh, and you know there are other people out there who are struggling with this as well anyways guys i hope this was a very insightful um episode today and uh we'll probably talk about more of this idea later in future episodes and i'll eventually have you guys write in and what you want to hear and topics to discuss and excited to keep this uh show on the road all right guys i'll see you in the next episode see ya by the way today's music was called the journey uh by soul rising so just in case um i'm just giving the credit to that particular provider um on youtube so that i don't get copyrighted that is their music not mine um and so yeah go check them out See ya.